all right good morning ladies and gentlemen good morning YouTube um, it's gonna come out here um, I'm on my way to a doctor's appointment so I want to film a quick video while I have time while I'm waiting for my ride to get here um, and today um, I'm just gonna make it really quick like I usually do on most of my videos um, today is Friday October the 7th 2022 um, my name is Lyra Edmond and I do videos on wellness and recovery and just my journey for wellness. Um, I come out here and I do like some um, information on like what's going on with my life, how am I doing as far as my mental health is concerned and also I give information to other people or to people that watch my videos on different um, outlooks on um, how to stay well mentally physically emotionally and most importantly um, I like to give a inspirational scripture or quote of the day um, when I do my videos so um, today I was looking um, last night because I've been I don't know if I self suffer from seasonal affective disorder sad um, but I was looking through my I was reading reading about some scriptures that I was wanting to find out some stuff about staying strong in your beliefs and your faith. And so um, in my phone, anytime I look up something, it'll also recommend stuff that I can look at that'll also help me with my um, search. And last night I was searching for um, staying strong and staying um, encouraged in the Lord and in your faith and in your beliefs. And it brought me to the book of Daniel and it was talking about the prayer of Daniel and if anybody that's that reads the Bible or that is a Christian know about the, the story of Daniel Daniel um, he was a person who was able to interpret dreams and but before he was able to interpret dreams um, he was also a person that was very big on his beliefs and his faith and about praying and but Daniel used to pray from what I remember reading in the Bible book of Daniel he prayed three times a day but his prayers were um, also I have to go through the book of Daniel to actually make sure I'm saying it right because I don't like to say anything if I don't know it the whole thing to say it right but what I remember about the book of Daniel is that he was um, a prayer warrior and um, the king had made a decree for people not to pray and um, Daniel was going to pray anyway and he was going to pray three times a day. And also Daniel, everybody knows about the Daniel fast, about how um, Daniel... Um, ate a diet of vegetables and fruits and he didn't take any wine he didn't drink any meat and um, I believe Daniel was also in reference to the um, what King Nebuchadnezzar and also the Hebrew boys which was Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego which was um, the ones that was thrown into the furnace and the Lord sent an angel to be in there with with them while they were thrown into the furnace by the king and not a hair on their head was scorched because of their savior and who they served so um yeah book of daniel is a very wonderful book of the bible um i'm just going off for what i remember about reading about the book of daniel but what sticks with me so importantly is the daniel fast and the daniel prayer so I'll read to you what my Bible, not my Bible, what my, um, and this is turned into Bible study. <laughs> but what I read to you is um, what my phone had for my feed for um, Daniel prayer. So let's see if I can go through. I'm looking down at my phone, of course. Daniel prayer
Okay. So it says, Daniel prayed to God three times a day. And I'm reading from Bible Gateway because I love to use Bible Gateway when I'm looking for something. And um, it's a very easy to read. And this is Daniel 6, chapter 10 through 28 verse. It says, Daniel always prayed to God three times every day. Three times every day, he bowed down on his knees to pray and praised God. Even though Daniel heard about the new law, he still went to his house to pray. He went up to the upper room of the house and opened the window that faced toward Jerusalem. Then Daniel bowed down on his knees and prayed just as he has always done. Then the supervisors and set satraps that this, I'm sorry. Then the supervisors and satraps went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and asked him about the law he had made. They said, King Darius, you signed a law that says for the next 30 days, anyone who prayed to God or any man except you, the king will be thrown into the lion's den. You did sign that law, didn't you? The king answered, yes, I did sign that law and he law, and the law of Medes and Persians cannot be canceled or changed. Then they said to the king, that man Daniel is not praying, paying attention to you. He is one of the captives from Judah and he is not paying attention to the law you signed. Daniel still prays to his God three times a day. Then the king became very sad and upset when he heard that heard this. He decided to save Daniel. He worked until sunset trying to think of a way to save him. Then his men went to a group of the king and said to him, Remember, king, that the law of the Medes and Persians cannot says that no law can command that the law, no law or command signed by the king can be ever be counseled or changed. So King Darius gave the order. They brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May God you serve save you. May the God you serve save you. A big rock was bought and put over the open of the lion's den. Then the king used his ring and put his seal on the rock. He also used the rings of his officials and put the seal on the rock. Then showed that then show this showed that no one could move the rock and bring Daniel out of the lion's den. Then King Darius went back to his house. He did not eat that night. He did not want anyone to come and entertain him. He could not sleep all night. The next morning, King Darius got up just as he was getting light and ran into the lion's den and ran to the lion's den. He was very worried. When he got to the lion's den, he called to Daniel. Oh, let's see. He called to Daniel. He said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God been able to save you from the lion's den? You always serve your God. Daniel asked, the king live forever. My God sent the angels to save me. The angel closed the lion's mouth. The lions have not hurt me because my God knows I am innocent. I never did anything wrong to you, king. King Darius was very happy. He told his servants to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, they did not find an injury on his body. The lions did not hurt Daniel because he trusted in his God. Then the king gave a command to bring the men who had accused Daniel to the lion's den. The men and their wives and children were thrown into the lion's den. The lions grabbed them before they hit the floor. The lions ate their bodies and they chewed on their bones. Then King Darius wrote this letter to all the people from the other nations and languages groups all around the world. The king wrote, Greetings, I am making a new law. This law is for the people in every part of my kingdom. All you must fear and respect the God of Daniel. Daniel's God is the living God. He lives forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. His rule will never end. God helped and saved his people. He does amazing miracles in heaven and on earth. He saved Daniel from the from the lions. So Daniel was successful during the time of King Darius and when the and when King was and King and when Cyrus the Persian was king. So um it was kind of long, but I wanted to share that story on here. And the Lord is like speaking to me because I feel like that. Um, let's see if I get out of there. I feel that story is so important. It's like it's talking about, you know. So it's it's so many different aspects you can take from the story of Daniel, um, but what I am getting from it is that um, he had faith and he knew Daniel knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was going to be saved. 
He didn't know what the outcome was going to be. Remember I was telling you the last video that I did, sometimes we don't know the outcome of things. But his faith walked him into there. He didn't put up a fight. He didn't um, state his calls or state his grievances about how he felt about going into the lion's den. Um, he went in there with faith and he knew that he was going to be taken care of. So sometimes that's what we're in. we sometimes we be in situations and we're like, you know, Lord, I know I shouldn't be in this situation. Or Lord, I'm going through this. I shouldn't be going through this because like he said at the end, he said, my God saved me because he knew that I didn't do anything to you, King. He knew that I didn't have, had put, had did anything against you, and, but pray to my God. And so um, sometimes we get caught up in the whys and what's and we shouldn't have to go through these things or we shouldn't have to deal with these circumstances. But God knows the outcome of everything. And he puts us, you know, people say, well, why does he test us? Sometimes it's not even a test. Sometimes it's God showing you that I'm going to show you just how big of a God I am. I'm going to show you just how great I am. And I'm going to show you that if you stay on course and if you, you know, you, you build your faith and you build your beliefs and you build your strength in me, then, you know, things will work out like they should in the end. So I just want to put that little nugget out there for anybody um, that's watching and um, just once I, what I always do is say, stay encouraged. I have had to build up my strength and my courage and my faith every day. And I was watching, um, I like to like watch Leandra Johnson. She's a singer, a gospel singer. And I watch her every day. Like I watch a new video of hers every day. I love to hear her sing. And um, she was, just, I love that she gives her testimony about her trials and tribulations she goes through and I've been listening to her music since she was on Sunday's Best and um, I think she has a powerful testimony and she has a testimony about her sobriety she gives a testimony about everything that she's been through and that she still I was watching something yesterday and she said every day that the sun comes up and it sets is a new day for a new beginning and I thought to myself, I was like, and she was like, that's why, you know, I worship and I praise the Lord and I just, I give thanks to him. And so I just want to say that to anybody, any day that you are able to wake up and see another day is another day for a beginning for you. And we have choices that we choose whether or not we're going to make that day the best it can be, or we're going to not make that day the best it can be. But um, I just want to say that and um, I'm feeling pretty good this morning. Um, I've been also doing a medication management class with um, somebody at my mental health center um, just to make sure that I'm staying on top of my medications and I'm taking them and that they are working for me. If I have any concerns about my medication or um, anything that I want to talk to them about, they're always there to um, help me with that. And I meet with my medication team, management team, once a month usually. So I just started this. This is something I'm on now. And um, today I have some concerns. I'm going to also schedule an EKG for me because I've been on a little stress. Not a little stress. I've been under some stress. And um, my doctor wanted me to schedule an EKG. And also because I'm 40 years old, I'll be 41 in November, Lord willing. Um that I will um, be scheduling my first mammogram that I've had. I had a mammogram back in 2009 because I was having some issues with um, lump, uh, not under my arm. And I think it was the deodorant that I was using. But um, I haven't had a mammogram since then. And I haven't had any problems with my breasts since then. So, um, yeah, you're supposed to get a mammogram yearly once you turn 40. And I'll be 41 in November and I haven't had my mammogram yet. So, um, they said that the first signs of in stage one if you are diagnosed with breast cancer that's the first stage of breast cancer or, or any type of cancer and if they can catch it in stage one it's usually an 80 to 90 percent recovery rate on stage one uh, cancer so um i i'm i'm saying that everything is going good i just want to be preventive rather than um um wait until something happened and trying to do something about it so 
These are preventive measures. I also scheduled my OBGYN appointment and I'm going to begin that done. So as a, as a woman, you should begin your um, yearly checkups for your gynecology visits and gynecologist visits. And you should also be getting um, your eyes tested, your teeth clean, your uh, primary care doctor should be looking into your um, other healthcare needs. And that's where I'm going today. I'm going to my primary care doctor today. And um, I already had my teeth cleaned. You're supposed to get them twice, at least twice a year. So I've had them done twice this year. And then I'm scheduled for another cleaning in February. Um, my eye exam is scheduled for January. So um, I just want to tell, just encourage people to stay on top. I have to remind myself and I have to encourage myself to stay on top of my health because you only have one body, you know. And another thing that I'm working on is I have silver sneakers. And so I got to see if my account is still active. And I think I'm going to start, you know, try to go to the gym in the mornings before um, I start my new job when I get everything back. My background hasn't came back yet. <laughs> They're still working on that. So that's what's going on with that. But um, just wanted to come out and say hello. It's been a kind of long video. Um, I didn't intend for it to be this long. But just to stay on your health and most importantly, um, take care of yourself. And um, yeah, just to take good care of yourself. So that's all I wanted to say today. I hope it wasn't too long on my video. Um, God bless you. God bless your family. And um, I just thank you for watching my videos. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and a new week coming up. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.